The chemical industry is an enormous economic engine. Uh, it has, uh, as I say, 26, 28,000 employees full time that go to work every day at our plants, 24 7, men and women who run our plants safely and with great environmental stewardship. Uh, that means there are tens of thousands of other jobs in the community uh, that exist because of the wages that we pay, because well, we pay well at our plants. The people who work at our plants make good money. And so that multiplies itself in the economy. It helps local governments with taxes. It helps parish governments with taxes. It helps the state with taxes. And it keeps a lot of people working. It also helps our educational institutions because many of our uh, companies are very much invested in the schools and the universities in their areas. One of the major issues that, that we're dealing with now is actually a, a pretty uh, positive issue, and that is uh, natural gas prices are low, and the abundance of natural gas is such that many companies are making significant investment decisions to put money and people here in Louisiana. Not just the companies that are here. Many of the companies that are here are expanding and, uh, and hiring people and making more products. But there are companies now that are relocating to Louisiana from other parts of the world because of the availability of natural gas. And that is a great blessing for the state because of, A, the jobs that we create and the ripple effect. The Louisiana chemical industry has a big impact on the Louisiana economy. There's no question about that. And it's actually growing. There's a lot of pieces in place now to really begin to make the chemical industry a bigger piece of the Louisiana pie. You know, part of it is these low natural gas costs that are uh, making this a place to really be uh, advantageous to set up shop. But I think we're in the early innings of the recovery because consumer confidence levels are still very, very low. And you do not end a recovery when consumer confidence levels are low. You end it when people are euphoric. It really is just the way, just the way it goes. Um, let's see. The, uh, what keeps me up, what bothers me, first of all, is I see this oddly from a very odd perspective at a university, but immigration restrictions. You know, every year in this country, we send back 17,000 foreign students that have earned an, a master's or a PhD program in the United States. And then this has come from 9-11, it's come from TARP, and it's created huge shortages of skilled labor in the financial community, in the technology community. This is crazy. These are the, these are the job creators. If we went out and looked for 17,000 people around the world, these are the 17,000 we'd bring back in. And uh, so I think that's a real failing that's got to be addressed somewhere. And I know I hear it all the time. I hear people say, Peter, my great-grandfather didn't come all the way across the Atlantic to move to a country that would be overrun by immigrants. <laughs> So they, um, you got to think about that. But um, they, um, and then there are restrictions on free trade. During the political debates, you started to hear some of the fringe politicians talking about, like, we ought to put big walls around the United States, like, uh, we'll make cars, our own cars, and drive them, and grow our own corn, and eat it. You know, it's a... Uh, Export is the key to growth for the United States. We have the products the rest of the world wants, and we can compete with this, in this rising middle class around the world. It's the key to our recovery. We can't close ourselves back in. Um, the United States is, you know, as, as Mr. Burns from the, you know, the nuclear power plant on The Simpsons, um, you know, if you listen to the media, you think we all had about six months to learn Chinese, you know, but it's, uh, that is not what's happening. Uh, the U.S. is still the largest and most productive economy in the world. We have 4.6% of the world's people producing 25% of the world's output. It's a pretty darn good number. The U.S. economy is larger than that of Japan, China, and Germany combined. China's growth is mainly at the expense of Japan, South Korea, and Mexico, not the U.S. These are jobs we already lost 30 years ago to Japan, South Korea, and Mexico. We're, we're fighting the last war here. Um, the U.S. is still the world's largest exporter of goods and services, and services part of that. We attract more foreign investment capital than any nation. We have the finest higher education system in the world by far. No kid ever grow, graduates from Baker High and then goes to Bombay Community College. It just doesn't happen. It's a one-way street. And a culture of technology and innovation that's second to none, which is really the strength of the United States. In fact, I saw this from Dan Becker at the Ivy Funds. There are still some things we do well in the U.S. We innovate, we create, and we invent. And I really do think that's the, um, uh, that's the key. My message is that the economy is really better than it's being perceived in the, in the mass market. We've been uh, growing for 12 quarters in a row. There's a lot of strong fundamentals in the economy, uh, some for this industry, some for all industries. And then we're, do, we're about to really ramp things up a little bit. The three things that have held the economy back during the recovery have been uh, very few loans coming out of banks. That's beginning to change. Uh, we're also starting to see a bottom in housing. And, um, and I think that's, those two things are really going to be big, big factors uh, going, going forward for us. Are you encouraged about the potential that the chemical industry has for Louisiana? 
It does. It's a big piece of the pie now, but we have a very strong labor force here. And some of the macro trends, the fact that uh, natural gas, which is a feedstock cost, has come down so much, it has made Louisiana not only more competitive than the other states because we're a big natural gas producer, but it's also made us more competitive against international expansion. We're seeing a number of companies that are reconsidering Louisiana versus maybe uh, an outpost in some other nation. It's very, it's very positive longer term. We're only as good as the education system that provides us the people that we need to run our plants. And this goes all the way from the Board of Regents. Dr. Jim Purcell is going to speak to us today about higher education, everything, uh, everything post-secondary, uh, technical schools, community colleges, state universities, and of course our Research One University, Louisiana State University. The Board of Regents has overall uh, policy direction with respect to all post-secondary education. So it's an extraordinarily uh, important uh, organization and Commissioner Purcell is a very important player in that. The big thing is that uh, higher education is committed to work with the chemical industry. We want to be close to our customer and get our graduates out. Speed to market is really what the future is in higher education and we know that the industry needs have the type of workers to make sure that they can be productive here in the state. How important is the chemical industry and its role with higher education? Well, they've been um, active supporters of a lot of activities for us. They're very committed to uh, providing scholarships uh, to a lot of our um, uh, scientists uh, throughout the state, and I think that's important. We're also going to hear from John White, our superintendent of education, to talk with us about the reform packages that have gone through the legislature and which now have to be implemented for, uh, for K through 12. These two educational systems, the continuum of education, literally from kindergarten to PTEC, to PhD. We're interested in every student, every step of the way. About 44% of our kids who enter eighth grade don't graduate. If we could just get half of those, half of those, and direct them early on in their junior high and high school careers to the trades and the jobs and the crafts that we have in our plants and our refineries, what a wonderful achievement that would be. And that's our goal, and that's what we're working with our state education leaders to accomplish. A lot of steps coming up, a lot of work to do. But in the end, as was said, I think all of this stuff is good change, it's good policy change and so on. But it will mean very little at the end of the day unless we implement. And I'm asking you to be part of the implementation solution. I really truly feel that one of the big, if not the biggest missing piece in our education system right now is that it continues to be a monopoly provider provided by the K-12 system that hasn't remotely harnessed the strengths of so many people outside of K-12 who frankly have spent generations getting very, very good at preparing people for the next generation. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what you're really good at. So why don't we invite you in to help us be good at it? If I can ever answer questions about what I've mentioned today, or if there's anything that I, I can do to help you and your company uh, in the K-12 realm, my email is john.white at la.gov. We have a plan for change. That plan for change is in part about inviting industry into K-12 education, and we need help of industry. Do you see any examples of anything that uh, could be done to help both Louisiana students and the chemical industry? Yeah, I do. When you think about large corporations and small corporations that are involved in the oil and gas industry, the ability of them to invite uh, uh, students to be actually prepared for career in their plants, for example, running some of the process technology uh, machinery and chemical equations that are required, and actually preparing kids for those specific workplace skills through a course specifically designed to do that, that sounds like a recipe for success. We work with the Department of Education, we work with the Board of Regents, we work with the universities, we work with the Louisiana community and technical colleges, all trying to develop a workforce platform so that we can help train young people to come into our plants and have great, great careers in the chemical industry. What kind of potential is there for a person that wants to get a job in the chemical industry? Well, there's tremendous potential. Number one, we have a wave of retirements. Baby boomers uh, are going to be retiring soon. We have this uh, wave, a tsunami of new investment coming to the state. There's a tremendous opportunity there to go to a technical college, for example, to get a process technology degree, and within a couple of years to make $60,000, $70,000 at a chemical plant uh, working eight hours a day. Uh, that's kind of hard to beat, and it compares very favorably versus many other professions and many other jobs here in the state. So we're very bullish on chemical manufacturing. 
We are experiencing a renaissance of chemical manufacturing in this state. We're very excited about it because it's great for the state and it's great for the citizens of the state. I have constituents who work for the, the, the different chemical manufacturers and of course it's not just about one particular district, it's about the whole state. And I recognize that the Chemical Association and all what it does for the state in terms of jobs, employees, uh, and, and of course the, the, the products that, that they do are used around the country is so important for all of us. What kind of an impact does the chemical industry have on uh, not only uh, the lives of people in Louisiana but state government as well? Well, all, all, all businesses, particularly uh, good long-term businesses like uh, the Chemical Association members, really important to the state because of economic development, jobs, bringing, bringing new business here from out of state when they see productive businesses already here is important to all of us, including people in New Orleans. It is a tremendous economic engine. It brings thousands of jobs, and especially high-paying jobs, to the district, which provides just great jobs for our district and puts a lot of money into the economy, which helps small businesses and everybody in the district. The chemical industry is an integral part of the River Parishes in St. Charles Parish and in Norco where we have uh, Shell Chemical and Momentum are two of the more important ones and right across the river we have Dow. They are essential, they provide high paying jobs, they provide a wonderful tax base, they produce essential chemicals and, and products that are used all throughout the nation in its manufacturing and all throughout the world in very important things and without them we would have a very uh, hard time getting along in everyday life. What kind of a neighbor are they? I think they're a great neighbor. They will address any concerns and as I grew up right next door to Shell Chemical and they have continued to work with the community and continue to be a good neighbor. They are a major economic driver throughout the state, uh, especially in southwest Louisiana. Uh, provides thousands of jobs to the state uh, and is uh, very uh, large in it, weighs very largely in our economic uh, structure in the United in Louisiana. What kind of a neighbor is the chemical industry? Oh, they're a very good neighbor and they're very good stewards of the of their environment as well as, uh, you know, bringing a lot of in, in monies into the state as well as in southwest Louisiana. The chemical industry has had the greatest impact in my district. I live along uh, the Mississippi River and that corridor is known as the chemical industry corridor. It's been the mainstay of Iberville Parish and Assumption Parish. Not only the plants being there, but regionally all the work that they uh, have for, they have employees that live all within that area. What kind of a neighbor are they? They are excellent neighbors. They donate to every part of the uh, parish's needs, where whether it's schools, um, whether it's uh, Pinewood Derbies for Boy Scouts, it, it goes on and on. You ask and you receive. The Chemical Association is a valuable partner in bringing jobs, resources, and other other resources to uh, to those parishes and helping them develop. In the New Orleans area, many of the central offices and other office space in New Orleans is located in the New Orleans area, and we're extremely appreciative of them being a great partner in developing our local economy. What kind of a neighbor are they? They're a great neighbor. I mean, uh, essentially, they do everything they can to get engaged in community activities and to work with us to try and help community groups and everybody else succeed and come up together. I think the impact has been very positive. We're talking about thousands of jobs, good paying jobs for people. Uh, and today they've become much more than just an employer in that they are a large consumer of natural gas for the products that they make. And the lack of markets has done a lot of harm to other parts of the state and our industry and they have filled that gap. Uh, without them we'd be in serious trouble. What kind of a neighbor are they? I find them to be good neighbors. I mean, I have some facilities up in uh, Bossier Parish and in Caddo Parish. I find them to be very conscious about what they do and very self-regulating what they do, and I, I'm pleased with that. The chemical industry in my area is the lifeblood of our, of our community. With uh, the chemical plants, the refineries, uh, that is their, uh, the, the largest industry in our end of the state, but statewide, uh, that industry provides more jobs probably than anybody else in this entire state. So they, they do a wonderful job. Uh, it has become a very clean industry, very environmentally friendly industry, and uh, they've just been great, great corporate neighbors in Calcasieu Parish.
We're actually four organizations. Uh, we're the Louisiana Chemical Association that represents chemical manufacturers all over the state of Louisiana. There are about 60 companies uh, that manufacture chemicals in the state. And we have about 28,000 employees. Uh, we have uh, the Louisiana Chemical Industry Alliance, which consists of these same uh, petrochemical companies and about 500 suppliers and vendors, people who supply us everything from pumps to paper clips to transportation services to construction and to maintenance. Then we have a, we have a, a foundation called LaFest, the Louisiana Foundation for Excellence in Science and Technology and Education. And what we do is we collect money and we distribute it for educational purposes or scientific research. And then the other organization we have is LAMP, which is a political action committee which participates in uh, legislative and statewide races here in Louisiana. So there are actually four organizations that comprise uh, the work that we do. Go to our website, lca.org, and it's everything's there. Or you can call our offices, uh, very simple, the, the telephone number, the email addresses are all on our website, lca.org.